welcome to our new series, Brave. In this series, we're going to talk about people in the Bible that learn how to be strong, brave, and courageous because of God. But before we go on, I want to invite everybody to please stand up and we're going to worship the Lord together.
to see you today. So today we're going to talk about a Bible story and today we're going to learn about a guy named Gideon. Let's watch this video and I hope you enjoy it. Bye! God's Story Gideon So part of God's story is about a man named Gideon and it begins like this. Israel, God's special family, had turned against the one real God and worshipped idols. They had forgotten how God had loved and cared for them and needed a reminder that He was the one in charge. So God took away the Israelites' farms for seven long years. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, God would let another nation called the Midianites sweep through and camp on Israel's land, ruining everything that was growing there. But even though his own family had forgotten him, God still loved them deeply. So, at the end of the seven years, God appeared to a young Israelite named Gideon. God said he was going to free the Israelites with Gideon's help. Gideon, however, wasn't so sure, so he asked God to prove himself by performing a series of miracles. Gideon said, If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. That's what happened. Just to be sure, the next night, Gideon asked God to do the opposite make the fleece dry, and make the ground wet. And God did it. Next, he even sent a sign through an angel. Gideon was finally convinced that God was in his corner, so he called together an army to fight against the Midianites. Now, normally, having lots of people is a good thing when you're about to battle. But like I said, God does things a bit differently. He told Gideon that the Israelites had too many soldiers. If they won now, God knew the Israelites would say it was because of their own strength and brag about it. So, God wanted Gideon to have a smaller army. Gideon was nervous, but he did as God asked, which is always a good idea, by the way. He told his men that if they were afraid, they could return home. With that, 22,000 soldiers left, leaving Gideon with about 10,000. For you math whizzes, that's two-thirds of his army just poof, gone. Even after all that, the army was still too big. So God told Gideon to take the soldiers down to the water to drink, and then send home the soldiers who drank out of the stream like dogs. Again, Gideon did what God asked and was now left with only 300 soldiers. God knew Gideon was probably worried, so he told him to sneak down to the enemy camp where Gideon heard soldiers talking about a crazy dream where a loaf of bread rolled into the Midianite camp and over their tent. One soldier said that could only mean that Gideon would triumph over them. Gideon returned to his own camp confident that he would win the battle. He divided his men into three groups and gave them each a trumpet and a jar with a torch inside. Not usually what you bring to a fight, but God had a plan. Gideon's army reached the edge of the Midianite camp and then went into action. They blew their trumpets, smashed their jars, and shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon! And don't forget, they did all of this without a single weapon in their hands. Terrified, the Midianites fled, accidentally attacking each other as they went. In fact, they ran so far from the battlefield that other Israelites were able to capture and defeat the leaders of the Midianites. With the enemy leaders gone and their army running away, God had saved Israel, just like he said he would. And that's the story of Gideon. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Israel turned away from God. God reminded them he was in charge. God said he would save Israel. He would use Gideon. God performed miracles for Gideon. Gideon gathered an army. God made it smaller, much smaller. Soldiers had a dream. Gideon's army surprised their enemies. The Midianites ran away. God used Gideon to save Israel. And that's a part of God's story. Welcome back, boys and girls. So the Bible story that we've watched earlier can be found in Judges 6 to 7. So in this story, Gideon and the Israelites were living under the bad people named the Midianites who took over their land. So God wanted to use Gideon to lead an army and save the people. But Gideon wasn't so sure 
about that. In fact, he asked God for signs to prove him that it was him who really talked to him. So let's find out why Gideon wasn't so sure about that. So the first point I want to tell you is Gideon was just an ordinary guy. There was nothing really or anything special about Gideon. He, was, he wasn't a warrior. He actually never led an army into a battle. And to think that Gideon is actually the smallest and the weakest among his family. So at that time, he even think that God was joking when God told him that he wanted to use him. He even thought that God made a mistake when he chose him. God sees something in Gideon that nobody else can see, and that is his heart. So one day, the angel of the Lord came down and appeared to him and tell him something that he really needed to hear at that moment. So if you have your Bible, you can turn it into Judges chapter 6, verse 12, and it says, Sir, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. So Gideon obeyed what God told him to do. So he gathered about 32,000 men, but God has a different plan. God told him, Gideon, you have a lot of men. You have to send them home, some of them home. So God, so Gideon obeyed what God told him to do, and he ended up having 300 men. I can't imagine what is Gideon feeling at that time. How can you possibly win a battle with this few men compared to a thousand and thousands of men? And to think about it, they didn't even have any weapon to use to fight this men. All, all they have are just trumpets, empty jars, and a torch. There is no way you can fight a battle using those. But you see, God did that because God wanted him to know that he is not going to do it on his own. You know, there are things in our life that we cannot do it on, in, on our own. It is only by the power of God that we'll be able to overcome it or to win that battle. And also, God did that not to make him afraid, but God wanted him to trust him and believe him of that wherever he go, whatever steps that he make, God is going to be with him. So Mrs. Rhea, what are we going to learn from this story? So I want to tell you that God can make us brave, like Gideon. You know, all he has to do is trust God and they won the battle. Come to think about it, they didn't even do anything. All they have are torches and they just blow their trumpets and break the empty jars. And what happened next? All the Midianites went crazy. They got confused. They fight each other and they got scared and run away. So today, boys and girls, I want to ask you something. Have you ever felt like Gideon? Have you ever felt afraid of something? Maybe you're afraid of talking in front of your class, or maybe you're just afraid sleeping alone, or you think you're not good enough to make it on a team. You know, no matter what it is, always remember God is with us. It doesn't really matter how well or how good or how great you do things. Do not be afraid to, to mess up. Do not be afraid to make a mistake. You know, the truth is God will still love us no matter what. So just like Gideon, God wants to use you to do big things for him. So I encourage you, don't let fear get in the way. So our memory verse for today, if you have your Bible again, you can turn it into 2 Timothy 1.7. And it says there, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. So boys and girls, I hope you learned something today. I hope to see you again next week. Have a great day. 
and bye.